$213, $213 um, you know, million dollars increase in all the other billions that they get. And all they're doing is just uh, making more uh, high-tech uh, surveillance and policing and violence. That's all it is. Thank you, Susan. Yeah, I agree very much. And just as you were saying that in terms of like, there's no way that the police commission themselves can even read that amount. It was interesting. That reminded me of today in the meeting when it was just very obvious that um, the commission were just kind of using LAPD's own talking points about the budget to even know how to talk about it or to be referring to what was in it. So, which I'm sure the LAPD loves. Um, so, and I'll just see if anyone else was able to perhaps take a look at it or has any, or if, or if folks are able to, um, and I see that we have a few questions as well that are kind of looking at the documents. And I don't know if, maybe we'll get to those in a moment, Shakira, I'm not sure what you think, but I um, uh, just wanted to see if anyone was able to perhaps, uh, if anyone was on the police agenda, police agenda on the uh, police commission meeting today and was perhaps there and wanted to, to share anything about, about what, what that was like being at that meeting. Okay, all right, um, so we'll keep it moving. So essentially, and Shakir, do you think we'll just, uh, I see there are a couple of questions about kind of items that are in it. Should we just get to those like when we're looking at it more closely or what do you think? Um, I can just maybe answer quickly now and then we can look at the records more closely later. But yeah, first, just to Susan's question, yeah, I mean, the, it is 700 pages, but it is absolutely, like Susan was saying, just a bunch of obfuscation and, and you know, like them just trying to bury this stuff. Like a lot of the pages are not actually the budget. It's like LAPD's like kind of strategic plan. And just, I think they just make this big folder of materials to just put it in front of the police commission and say, here, we have a bunch of stuff, just vote this through more than there's any explanation. There's also this whole kind of exercise in a lot of items, and we'll, I'll show this later as we look through the records, is is there's like a really long, like three page explanation for some like, you know, small item of funding and how necessary it is, how important it is. But then there's whole categories that are like way more kind of even like Yarden is asking, there's like this, this says 3.2 million for software. I mean, I haven't seen that example, but there's a lot of stuff like that, that like, on the one hand, they're explaining the shit out of some things, but then some other stuff just it just kind of snuck in there. And I, that's also part of, you know, the obfuscation and their strategies for sneaking this through. Um, so yeah, we'll look at that all more closely. The separation incentive program, Amira, I think is like a buyout thing. It's like for early retirement type something, I think. Yeah. We can talk more about that later too. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, so just in terms of catching folks up. Um, so yeah, so the budget was released. Uh, we did open it up. Well, some of us opened it up, took a look at it. And um, so as folks may have heard, it was a, it's, re, it's asking for a 12% increase from last year, um, increase in funding to the tune of $213 uh, million. So this would be the largest budget for LAPD ever. Um, and a lot of it is like, as we heard at the police commission meeting today, a lot of it was around this language of restoring LAPD to like previous levels of whatever. So previous like service levels or um, kind of restoring it to levels that it, it should have been at before when before it was like being understaffed. So uh, that was very much the word of the day today. Um, but in terms of like, what was our um, community response to that, uh, folks were able to um, kind of dive into the, uh, the documents and share them to a certain extent and kind of be looking through them together and be pulling out some information to be sharing with folks. Um, and we did um, have a press conference on Monday morning saying that we reject this budget, we reject the increase and just calling out um, this need to be divesting from 
uh, policing and to be investing in community programs. So that was like our immediate response to it, as well as um, just, you know, calling for folks to be to be also um, emailing the commission, um, calling in, submitting public comment, and, um, and also to be joining us like here and just be be joining us in this uh, fight and conversation around the LAPD budget and how we can be pushing back on this um, on this budget, which, um, as we know, is just additional surveillance, additional violence, um, additional displacement. Um, so, yeah, so that has been kind of our what's been happening so far. And then in the meeting today, they did talk about it, obviously. Um, they had public comment, which was limited to 45 minutes at the beginning of the meeting. Um, which is just extremely frustrating as always. And uh, then they did, uh, yeah, they talked through the budget and they didn't spend a whole lot of time on it. Um, there was some pushback from one of the commissioners regarding the need to be investing in community services that are not police. And um, that was pushed back on by more, not surprisingly. Um, but that conversation was there as well as there was a, one of the commissioners, Bonner, was also talking about the fact that it needs to be um, more accessible uh, to the public. So those were just some of the, and I just say this to say that these are like some of the conversations that were going on there on the commission. Um, and so, yeah, so that was kind of what happened today. And they also, they voted to accept it, to, uh, to pass it through to the mayor. So those were some, of, that's kind of what happened today. Um, and I'll just pause and see if folks have any comments or questions on any of that so far. Um, or again, if folks are able to attend the meeting. So Susan has a question or comment. Yeah, go ahead, Susan. You said something about them the restoring uh, to original uh, levels of service. So um, they're going to add more police to the force. Is that what you're saying? I think that's true. Shakir, is that, did I get that right? Yeah. I just and actually, the Briggs, William Briggs, the commissioner, or the president of the police commission today specifically put it as um this is on the path to restoring to 10 like a two-year plan to restore it to 10,000, which has been a little bit under um and and yeah so the, in the immediate they're increasing it to 10,000, and then beyond that people are today at the commission throwing around numbers like 12,000 and stuff so you know it's probably only gonna get bigger okay and that includes all of the security guards that they added uh like last year, was it was it last year? They added all those uh, armed security guards. Um, they deputized them or something. They added them to the force and made them officers somehow. Quasi officers or something. I don't know. I'm like I was there at that commission meeting when they voted on that, but I'm sorry, my memory is not that good. But I knew that they were adding armed security guards. To, uh, police force, you know, and so now they want to, they want to uh, add even more. What are they getting ready for? Or are they taking up all of those uh, soldiers that are coming out of the material wars that the uh, United States is ending finally? Yeah. Well, no. That those are both great, great questions. So I think actually no like anything anyone they're kind of deputizing in that way from the community like those kind of additional eyes and ears that they have or when they work with the private security patrols of business improvement districts those are not included in the in this 10,000 those are on top of that also all of their um I think the, the, the difference between the sworn personnel and the um whatever the other non-sworn personnel they like those are also um that, that's also, there's a whole bunch of other uh, civilian personnel, yes. Um, um, so that's all part of it too. Um, and actually one more thing that we wanted to share that is that last, just last week, the, this is 
going to Susan's question about veterans and of kind of the U.S.'s imperial wars being com coming back and being placed in the kind of front lines of occupation and violence here. Just last week, the, the Biden administration's Department of Justice approved of another, I think maybe $3 million um, grant of funding through the COPS hiring program. This is the third time that, that they've done that in the last couple of years. Um, that's to hire 20 or 25 new COPS for community policing efforts. So that's again, Biden administration COPS funding. The last times that happened were 2012, 2015. So it's 2012, 2015, and 2021. And then, you know, those are all years that Democrats are in power. That's when they keep giving all this money to LAPD to, to hire more people. Um, I see in the chat, yeah, should I, should we take some of these questions too? The... Yeah, I haven't looked at them, but I think yes. Yeah, they're about the content. So maybe we can just, yeah, do some of these and, and then move to the process and then come back. Um, so, um, Audrey says they planned all along to make 22 that would sh budget that would show how they never took the defund dem demands at all seriously. That's right. Uh, Marianne asks, um, it was reported that there are loads of pay raises integrated in the budget. Do you see anything in there about that? Yeah, so a lot of the costs are, are personnel costs. Um, I can actually just maybe just share where you can see that. But, um, and, and today, um, the at, at the commission, they talked about how it was because the, the personnel have been putting off payroll raises or uh, cost of living increases, sorry. Um, that and so those are finally going into effect. But if you look at this number here that's highlighted 127.5 million, about half the pay increase is just entirely new salary. So that's not, again, that's not that's not the exit, that's not the total salary, that's just the amount of the increase that's that's personnel and salary. So that's a lot of the pay increases. Um, um, and then Carol asks, how does the police commission have the power to increase the budget? So the police commission, and this is maybe a good point to transition to um, what Ni was gonna share about the process. So they today are only, LAPD comes up with their proposal, their budget people and the department, and then the police commission just approves of that to kind of move it along. And so after this, it moves on to new step. And today was just this first step. So maybe since Tiff has stepped away, should we, yeah, should we move on to that? Part of it is talking about this process and how it goes, the next steps. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. So we'll just hand it over to Ni nee to talk a little bit more about that. Cool. I'll share my screen uh, shortly so that way y'all can, can see it. Um, so yeah, we um, we wanted to talk a little bit about the process as well of um, the the budget. And so uh, we wanted to uh, take a look at the zine that um, we did in collaborations as well, or that free rides, um, they put most or, or all the artwork and all of the, the formatting and everything. So in collaborations with the free rides, uh, we came out with this with LAPD's budget creep, and that's specifically about the 20, uh, 21 budget process, um, as well as more information about um, how that looks like. But um, you can also find uh, the information here as well, the QR code, but I'll go ahead and share um, the what the theme kind of goes through. We'll share a few uh, slides of some of the, the process. Um, but uh, so, LAPD and uh, specifically their budget. So um, over 50% of their budget comes from, um, or 50% of the city's discretionary funds go specifically to fund uh, LAPD. Um, and that is 50% um, that they are spending on policing as opposed to things that our communities actually require or would need uh, for, this bar graph shows the kind of the, as the years go by, how the budget has increased um, and how the budget has increased dramatically under um, Mayor Garcetti. And so if you look, um, the beginning of the, the graph shows from 2013 over to 2021 um, and how it's, it's increased dramatically. And so the two different colored lines, the top part, it includes what LAPD's full budget, including the pensions and the employment benefits. Um, but the the bottom half uh, or the darker orange 
portion is specifically LAPD's operating budget. Um, and it's a, a as as um, it's kind of written here, it is a budget theater because it's um, a lot of it is is inaccessible. A lot of it isn't provided as much to to the community. Um, and so it's also important to to be aware that like at least a lot of this information, we also had to um, file some request, um, some PRAs as well to be able to to access that as well as a lawsuit to be able to get some of this information. Um, but oftentimes it's it's not as accessible and it's not really itemized in a way that would allow for um, the transparency for communities to be able to see it. But um, it also goes against um, even their own surveys and their own um, own research that um, they're quoted saying, uh, which shows that people um, don't want more funds to go towards towards the police. And even if you have, even today during the, the police commission meeting, um, you had folks commenting about how um, there, you shouldn't, you should invest in our communities and not in police um, and, and echoing those same calls for, for defunding uh, the police. But um, regardless of whether or not there is um, folks in the community that don't agree with it, it's still something that continues to, to get passed along, regardless of what uh, community is, is, um, is wanting or, or community um, would want to, to have. Um, and the 2020, 2021 budget process. So um, even though there was uh, for, for, for the following year, the, the year before, um, even though there was a lot of calls for defunding, it still ends up um, expanding it to a larger, um, a larger budget. And so it, it gets released or it gets given to LAPD writes their proposal for the following or upcoming fiscal year. Uh, the budgets are usually released on November, uh, which is also, um, I think it's really important to think about why it is that it, it gets released in November. Um, and, and as well, how little time people have to be able to process it. Um, for the 20, for the one that was received for 2021, um, it was the same thing um, as, as this process, right, where they only had one business day to be able to go through the, um, to be able to go through those documents, and then it gets sent to the, uh, or presented at the police commission, uh, where the police commission rubber stamps it, um, and continues to, um, it, it continues on to the, um, the mayor um, who ends up uh, kind of drafting it as well and then sending it to city council. And so um, even the their entire or their process for being able to do that, it's just a, a way of rubber stamping something that we know they're ultimately going to give uh, LAPD. There's some really dope graphics that they also created. Um, but it's it's essentially it is it continues to to snowball continues to it's 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 it continues to increase um, exponentially and, and that's not the same case for the resources and what our communities require. And so this um, this slide a little bit talks about um, so even within the police commission um, it. I'll highlight it here as well, how they even, they themselves know that they, that they don't have any um, any authority, they don't um, really challenge them. And so when you hear, when you um, kind of go through the process, even when they were talking about it today, it was um, it was very, you can tell how, how coordinated it is as well and how they continue to, to kind of rubber stamp and continue to just approve things without really um, being able to, um, kind of know exactly what it is that they're spending their budget on and why this increase continues to, to grow. And this is a comment from uh, Commissioner Bonner about why the, about the budget and the rubber stamping. So what the actual budget is, um, so it's the related and indirect cost, the base budget, as well as the new additions to the budget. And the, a lot of this as well, so um, when it gets improved, so when there is a, the uh, funds that haven't been used, it gets um, sent to the, to the following 
following year as well. And so um, a lot of that information doesn't get, um, it doesn't get released to the community. We're not really, it doesn't track it. And they do a poor job as well of, of being able to track it or at least to provide it as well for, for community folks. And it just gets a, it becomes a, a kind of a blame game as well, where it just gets sent between the different departments, um, but yet not much is is really um, the community doesn't have the transparency or the the ability to be able to prevent that from happening because the folks that are um, because of those different departments that continue to rubber stamp and and provide that um, illusion of a process. And then another thing to consider when uh, we're thinking about the budget is how uh, charitable donations as well become line, line items. And so the next part, it just breaks down um, more about how those um, charitable donations as well have been used. So things like, um, I know someone named, I believe Susan had named um, Palantir as well. And so how as well, um, they there are a lot of donations that get placed as well um, and how, academics and, and other uh, nonprofits and other organizations can provide and, and kind of buy out their, buy out the LAPDs, um, can, can buy, buy them out by being able to, to provide these donations and be able to provide them uh, resources to be able to continue uh, funding things like uh, community policing um, and, and other things that, other forms of surveillance as well, um, and behavioral surveillance that our communities don't need. And so, um, that's also an example about Motorola as well, um, providing a, a charitable donation, um, how technology gets utilized as well. Um, so naming Palantir um, as well as, as one of the, the charitable donations, uh, the community policing, um, as well as there was an actual horse um, in, in 2014, uh, Chief Harley Beck also signed um, Find a, 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 the approval for um, the the horse as well, and so how a lot of these tools kind of get utilized and kind of just get um, slipped in um, to be able to provide LAPD with more tools and more toys to be able to to harass our communities. And then another things to look out for. So when you're looking at the budget as well, um, one thing that you should be focusing or, or one thing that um, other things that you can, can be looking at as well are the um, officers that are hired from other departments, um, purchases of technology and outsourcing surveillance, um, and then joint departmental programs designed to share funding uh, where the funding goes back to LAPD's budget, but isn't reflected in the proposed budget. So these are all, tools and tactics as well that can be utilized to be able to as well um, hide some of that information. And I'll leave it off because um, I know that we, we want to kind of go through as well the, the specific budget for this year. Um, but this one kind of this specific slide talks about um, how much is being utilized as far as the um, 150,000 per officer for salary and benefits uh, for potential lawsuits. It's an average of $4,511.11. 4, and if you would want to get a look more in depth about the 2021 budget and specifically to look through the budget creep, um, I would recommend um, going through either defund surveillance, but um, I would recommend going to, you can also find it as well the, at the stoplapdspine.org. If you go through zines, you would be able to find it. It is one of the last zines that we created. So um, if you're more, if you, you're interested in looking more in depth at it, I highly recommend um, taking a look at the, uh, the zine, which we have both online and printing version if you would want to take a, if you would want to print it out as well. Awesome. Thanks so much, Nee. And I'm sorry, were you going to add anything there? Okay. No, yeah. at the, the comments um, to look if I if I missed anything. Sorry about that. <laughs> My facial expressions tell everything. <laughs> no, I was just checking. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, and I think we have 
I'll just check that as well. <clears throat> yeah, and Amira's comment in the chat, um, they straight up characterize protests as akin to natural disasters to be managed. Wow, page eight of the long budget. Yeah. Oh. Um, okay, so yeah, why don't we, uh, we'll transition next to talking more about like what is in the budget. Um, but yeah, just want to again, let folks know that that, uh, that zine is a really great resource um, that really kind of informs our analysis around the, the budget. And um, so that's just a really, a really great thing to check out if folks have the time. Um, so yeah, do folks have questions on that part? Or kind of the budget process? Thank you, Amira. Amira says, thank you for sharing. And okay, so now we'll, uh, we'll kind of transi transition to talking about um, what is in the budget. And um, I think for this, both, both Shakira and I were gonna kind of make some comments um, on things. Well, I was gonna make some comments. I think Shakira may be a little more detailed and kind of wanting to go through um, and kind of looking with folks a little bit more. And perhaps also, I know that folks have been perhaps looking at that document now. And um, we very much, again, want to be encouraging folks to be um, looking at it if you can, um, or just perhaps as we are talking about like, oh, what is in the actual budget? Um, maybe if, if folks have questions about specific things, uh, either, either looking at them, like looking at, at the items, or just if you're not able to, to take a look at it now, just questions that you might have about what is in it. So, now is a great time to to put that in the chat, um, or you can also raise your hand, or or just uh, you know ask out loud. Um, Shakir, do you think it's okay if I just kind of start with a few of the things that I noticed? I think you may have more comments than me, is why I'm saying that. Or what are your thoughts on that? No, go for it. I was gonna um, uh, just put it on the screen too. So if you, I can just do that now. And then as you talk, as you mention stuff, I could try to scroll to it and stuff. Okay. Yeah, and I'll be honest that I don't have a super in-depth <laughs> comment on this, but I, I did have a few things that I that I just wanted to name, um, and then I'll hand it over to Shakir as well. So uh, just a few things that I wanted to name and that I was going to kind of call out in my public comment today that I, like like many folks, I'm sure never never got to because they only do 45 minutes. But uh, so a few things that I was struck by looking at it, um, just in terms of just a couple items in terms of the surveillance. Like one, I think we were all aware of is um, the helicopter. That's something they ask for every year. It's uh, seven million dollars, I believe. Um, I think they already have something like 17 helicopters in their fleet. Um, and this is, of course, it's nothing new, but it's worth just calling out that this is very much part of their um, surveillance and the way that folks are surveilled from the air. And I think it's something that um, as a coalition, we would like to learn more about in terms of like, you know, the type of video streaming that they're doing from these helicopters, the fact that I think over half of them have these, you know, or more have like these video streaming capabilities that um, are picking up a lot of information and they are constantly patrolling. Um, they're, they're patrolling specific corridors of land and, um, and gathering information. And so of course, this is just one of the ways that, um, that LAPD is kind of maintaining that surveillance from the air. Um, in terms of, there was one item that caught my eye that I'd like to learn more about as well. It was a uh, $400,000 for video, I think it was auto video tagging of body worn video. And um, that is something that I believe is a new item. I didn't see it in the budget from last year at least. And um, so that is, so they of course would pass this off as we always hear from them like, oh, we don't look at the body worn video because there's just so much of it. We can't possibly process looking through all of it. So that they'll probably say, well, this is something that's going to help us be able to review that video. Gee, that sounds good. But what we know about in terms of in the past when they've talked about wanting this capability to be able to auto tag video, what that means is, um, at least how they've talked about it in the past, is kind of um, looking at certain motions that someone might be might be doing and then uh, telling the computer or, or whatever it is telling the software to code that as a certain type of motion like 
uh, someone moving their arm in a certain way may be coded as being an aggressive motion and then being able to automatically review video and tag any motion in that way, uh, which of course um, raises a lot of, of flags for us. So that's probably what that means is how are they going to be able to look through video and automatically tag it to do a certain thing. And also we don't know, yeah, we just don't know. There's so many questions about that. So that was one thing. Um, and then the other main thing was um, just following up from having just released our report, um, Automating Banishment, where we're very much making this connection to policing and displacement and policing and gentrification. Um, I was very struck by reading the budget, just like the overview and kind of the, of course, I read the shorter document uh, where they're talking about um, how they are funding CSP this year, how they're, you know, $2 million for CSP. Uh, one of the things they were doing is they're funding the CSP site at South Park, uh, I believe, for the first time, because previously, um, as me was describing, that was initially funded through a donation that was made uh, to the Police Foundation. So it was a donation that was made in 2019. And the one of the requirements or stipulations of the donation was that uh, by year three, I think it was, this has to become a budget item. So it's a way that something is kind of guised as, oh, how wonderful, this is a donation to the police, but it's kind of forcing its way into become a regular budget item in a few years time. So that's the case with the South Park CSP. And in terms of like connecting to that to the report, like when we talk about CSP sites, and this is something that the folks in the community policing group have been working on a lot more, um, we're really looking at, you know, these in terms of how their sites for, you know, uh, police surveillance and also just like um, observation of people, um, surveillance of folks, and also um, how they're ultimately sites of displacement and kind of looking at it that way and looking at who, who are these donations coming from? Yeah, exactly, Charles. It's, this is a donation that came from the Balmer group. Um, and I think that was even named in the, in the budget. Uh, so it was initially funded by Steve Balmer, who had funded, I believe, also the CSP at Harvard Park. And uh, so it's literally paying to set up this, this substation at these, at these locations. Um, and it's also, it, it's of interest to see that Steve Bomber is also at the same time developing an arena in Inglewood that is this billion dollar arena that is literally displacing folks just like the land from the arena is being part of it was was seized. I don't know if that's the correct term, but seized through eminent domain. So displacing folks in, in, in kind of just taking the land for that arena and then also it's going to be continuing to displace folks in the future. So, um, so it was just interesting to see that as a, or alarming to see that as, again, one of the ways that the police are kind of expanding their reach and just seeing this again, it's very much a, a, a budget of violence and surveillance and displacement of folks and how that's being aided by um, these like, like in this, in this case, a sports mogul and uh, billionaire um, who's also a developer. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is then also seeing again in the budget, same as last year, this justification of CSP um, because like saying, oh, it, this is something that has been proved to be successful uh, based on the UCLA study of this, which again, we know this is very much a flawed study in terms of how it was done. Uh, that study was done in 2020. Um, and part of it was done by uh, Jeff Brantingham. And um, this was a study that was basically, they're saying that this was kind of a, an assessment of CSP sites of which there are nine, but they actually they only looked at two sites. They looked at two sites that LAPD told them to look at. Uh, and in terms of when they did the comparison of looking at the results of what was going on in the CSP as compared to other places, those other places that they were comparing it to was actually a synthetic model that was developed by Jeff Brantingham. So um, yeah, so it's just a lot wrong with that. And so it's kind of just very much like opening up the budget and seeing these themes of like the connection to land development and displacement and the connection to 
academic complicity in terms of being able to kind of expand these programs. So those were just some of the things that, that I was struck by. And I'll, sorry, I was talking a lot there. I'll just, sorry, I muted myself too soon. I'll uh, check some of these comments as well. Wow. So Carol says, the helicopters follow me every day. If I try to take pictures, they block the photo. Wow. Carol, please do say any more about that if you would like to. Uh, and Amira says, they also seem to talk about body-worn video as an example of their own accountability as if they are responding to critiques of their own violence. Yes. Okay, and uh, Shakir, I think I'll pass to you unless folks have any other comments or questions. Any other comments or questions? So, okay, so I wanted- just, oh, oh, I'm sorry, just a quick clarification because I think I missed it. What does CSP stand for? CSP is the Community Safety Partnerships Program. It's like basically LAPD's biggest current community policing program. Um, it started primarily in, um, in uh, the HACLA mm -hmm. and housing buildings as like kind of an auxiliary police force in those buildings. And basically right. it's policed deeply in, yeah, in, in certain neighborhoods. Thank you so much. Totally got it. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I wanted to, the main thing I wanted to do is to just, um, just kind of walk people through these records because, you know, as Tiff mentioned, these just came out on Friday night and then we kind of had just a matter of days to get some, um, to start looking at them and, you know, before the police commission rammed the thing through. And, but as, as Nina described, you know, we have now a long period of time of, of process or not long, but a couple of months to really start dissecting this in more detail to mobilize against it and to, to fight it um, through the mayor's office and city council. So I wanted to kind of just share with people the, the, what the records are that we have, because we'll need kind of help analyzing and dissecting these. And, and you know, we have a, a couple of work groups that, that do that. And if you're interested in joining that, um, um, you're welcome to do it or even just to do it on your own time and come back at, you know, the next time we meet um, to share what you're, what you're finding. So, okay, so let me share my screen again. Um, so, well, I think I shared in the chat, if someone can paste that in again, the Google Drive link again, um, that has um, both this year's budget proposal plus some other records I'll talk about from the past that we got through that lawsuit, like Nee mentioned. Um, we had to sue LAPD to get a bunch of their budget records because they were refusing to disclose those publicly. Um, so I'll, I'll get to those, but this let's start now with this year's budget proposal. So there's there's two documents, as we mentioned earlier. One is um, like about 700, 687 pages, the other is 23 pages. The shorter thing is just kind of the, like a, summary of it, executive summary. That executive summary is within the bigger document too. So if you only open the bigger document, then you'll see it. Um, this is also like, it's. I think it's, I find it nicer to work, to look inside the, the bigger document because it's um, text searchable. So you can just, like when Tiff had mentioned helicopter, I just like typed helicopter and it jumped to that page or there's 61, or there's a lot of mentions of helicopters. But yeah, the point is you can, you can jump around by searching. So this executive summary, is basically a summary, not of the entire budget, but just of the amounts that they're adding to their current budget. So last year's budget. So which that, that's to say that they don't really bother to justify their entire spending, the like $3.3 billion of spending, or even their one point, um, whatever, nine, seven billion, I think this year in their operational spending, all that they even provide this itemization of that all that was voted on today all that anyone's able to scrutinize from these records is just the new stuff that they're adding on top of whatever exists. So that's kind of what leads to this snowball that like in that zine that um, the new is sharing the, the budget creep scene, that's what leads to that, that creep. So all that's, that's really itemized in here is those new items. And so you see on top of the whatever billions they already spend on personnel, they're trying to add another 127 million to personnel. You see that with the salaries and expenses. It's kind of broken down, um, but it's not. I guess this gardener caretaker here is 
um, not that you don't get the cost of them. Um, and then, okay, so that's that first one. Second here is another thing to highlight is it says after action recommendations. So what this refers to is after the budget or after the, um, uh, basically after the George Floyd uprising, LAPD commissioned a bunch of reports, the city commissioned these reports on kind of LAPD's actions during the protests and their violence kind of during the, the violence towards the community during the uprising. Out of that, these reports, which were kind of done by a bunch of LAPD insiders and LAPD veterans, basically what those reports recommended is we need more resources for police. For example, here it's community relations and trust building and policy, certain policy and legal stuff, training and technology and equipment. So together they're now coming in here asking for $18.4 million in spending for those based on those reforms from the protests. Of course, like the protests were calling to defund the police, but that's how they're they're using those protests and saying, oh, okay, yeah, we, we agree we screwed some stuff up at the protests, but that's why we need all this funding to you know train our officers better and all of that. So that's this is where this is listed just up here in the budget, the executive summary. But I wanna um, jump to it later on so you can see kind of what other information they're putting. The way I'm just doing that is I just typed in after action. Um, and now it goes to later on, this is like page 516 there's a little more explanation here of what it is, a little more breakdown of that 18.4 million. So specifically when they were saying community relations and trust building, what they're saying is they need to hire five cops um, uh, who are gonna help engage with the community and build community trust. Who the fuck knows what that is about, but that somehow they need uh, these community relations and trust building cops. <laughs> They also need a whole one, just one cop is gonna cost them 850,000 a year uh, to liaise with the National Guard to just like coordinate with the military. Um, that's just, And that's a yearly budget item that they're now adding. And the funny thing is, so like, if this goes through this year, next year when they come back, they're not even gonna to bother to justify this. That's gonna become part of their permanent budget. They're not gonna come and say, oh, we need to add this. That's just now permanently part of their budget. Um, there's 12 point whatever for training, um, which by the way includes the less lethal ammunition. So they're just a bunch of this training is um, is is just you know just the cost of it is just kind of bullets to shoot away at these these trainings. Um, and then this is I think really important to look at because this one is kind of hidden a little bit. It's listed as technology, 4.13 million dollars. But what that that four million dollars is for is to develop a is it cadre or cadre what it, to work with the community on developing guidelines and strategies on how best to enhance situational awareness and improve community and officer safety. And it's eight different officers. Four are, and they're all intelligence gathering. It says it's four crime intelligence analysts and four police officers who are going to track and utilize the resources and analyze open source data. So this is basic to quickly provide intelligence during incidents. So this is basically eight cops that they're hiring whose permanent job is to look at data and intelligence and gather intelligence, intelligence gathering related to protests. You know, before when these proposals came out and we're going through city council, we kind of tried to raise alarm about it and were able to mobilize a lot of people to speak out against what looked like basically an effort to create kind of, and this, I, I think Charles, you asked about this earlier, kind of that political uh, policing, whether whether that's where where in here that's in here. And I think this might be sort of it. It's really buried. It's in like, it's and it's interesting that it's under technology, which just goes to show this is what we were saying is that, you know, back in the day, LAPD literally had cops whose job it was to like infiltrate community groups and like, you know, be like going to meetings and like literally infiltrating in that way. Now they just use technology with the goal of of gathering intelligence on community groups and protests and 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 specifically around yeah around kind of public order and protests and political activity. So that's I think something that's really alarming that we should look out for. Um, I can stop there so far. Any any thoughts or questions tonight? Can't see the chat, so I don't know if anything's going on in there. Yeah, I can read the chat. Give me a second. I know Charles, you said we've got a, quite a few items here in the chat. I know Charles, you had said that um, 
Charles, you said a, a few other line items stood out to you. Did you want to name those right now? Sure. Yeah, I can. I can go ahead. Um, yeah, I. I, uh, I think y'all have mostly covered them, but um, I thought that uh, the sort of repeated uh, couching of these increased budget requests in terms of, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion um, is interesting. Not, you know, not just like the overt like DEI package uh, that I'm, I'm kind of curious what the breakdown of those 460 grand are. But uh, on top of that, um, even if you just look in the executive summary, uh, let me try to find this page. Um, yeah, if you, if you look on page seven, uh, which I, I think is page eight of the PDF, page seven numbered, uh, under focused sworn recruitment, um, they say, uh, the department's commitment to increasing the representation of African-Americans, women, and people of color in the sworn ranks is dependent on a robust, determined, and creative recruitment program. So, uh, they're, they're using, you know, uh, yeah, they're using DEI there as uh, basically a pretext for um, for beefed up recruitment uh, and targeted recruitment as well, right? Uh, and um, in addition to that, there's one specific line item which I thought was pretty funny uh, slash sinister, which is uh, under the technology support, um, which is on page three of the like, the table at the end of the executive summary. It's page 17 of the document. Um, like second from the bottom there is a, a racial identity profiling acts database. That's a 500 grand uh, request there. Um, I don't know if it's on top of like an existing base amount, but you know, looking up this act, uh, it, it essentially is, is mandating that you know, police departments, um, you know, reduce or somehow eliminate instances of, of racial profiling, or, or, or at least like, you know, do so on paper by, um, by kind of equalizing, <laughs> uh, you know, rates of, of police stops and so on, um, you know, between, I guess, different, different racial groups or something. Uh, but, but the ironic thing to me is that, you know, uh, they're they're requesting another five hundred grand uh, to collect more data, uh, you know, with the supposed end of reducing uh, profiling, and you know the form that that data takes concretely is precisely what's going into like those field interview cards, right? Uh, among other things. So, um, yeah, those those kind of stood out to me. Um, in addition to sort of what y'all have already uh, pointed out, you know, both during this this call and. And in the uh, the you know Twitter thread that that you posted earlier. Oh, uh, one one more thing was um, with regard to the CSPs. Uh, in the sort of section of the executive summary relating to them, uh, which is at the bottom of page six, uh, not only do they explicitly you know shout out the Balmer Foundation for basically providing the seed funding for the South Park CSP, but they also explicitly named the, um, the UCLA Luskin School, uh, you know, study as, as like a, a justification for their additional funding requests. So in terms of academic complicity, like that's, you know, um, yeah, pretty, pretty overt. Thanks, Charles. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'll, I'll check for additional uh, comments in the chat. And Carol says, uh, the technology is far beyond what you can imagine. All cell phones are monitored. I started researching this in 2018. Carol, I'm not sure if you're able to or would like to say any more about that, but we welcome you to do that. Uh, 
And uh, Jack also says, uh, how does LAPD intend to fund this increase since the projected budget gap for next year is 261 million? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Well, there, there is no answer. It's just that they, they just want the money. And so that's the answer to that is that's why we, you know, that's how we fight it, um, that there's a budget gap that the city is facing. And here is LAPD asking for literally almost that same amount of money as their, as their just yearly increase, whereas all these other, every other agency is taking cuts and, and dealing with austerity. And by the way, the $261 million is probably a low number, given that the existing budget, a lot of one-time money is financing continuing programs. So it's probably going to be like 300 million. So to get the other 213 million, they're going to have to take it out of somebody's hide, whether it's rec and parks, whether it's the firefighters, whether it's transportation, you know, it's going to come out of somebody's hide. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I think as we look forward to the next year, it's thinking about all those other things that, that are going to, all these other agencies, all those other city employees, all these other programs, all these other communities that are going to be affected by police you know, here's 717,000 for five disinfecting robots or 250,000 for a community survey, which no one asked for, a climate study, I think, which is again about the diversity and inclusion. So yeah, that's kind of some of the, that's kind of some of the items in here. Yeah, and we just had a few other comments. Um, so, uh, and that is, Arnab says that kind of sounds like new dedicated social media surveillance. And I forget what that was in reference to, but. I think to the public order, yeah, to the, um, to that kind of those analysts that they were hiring to, to monitor open source social media and all that. And that's, I think that's right, yeah. Yeah, and then Carol says technology or university students on the streets. And uh, Charles says might also involve data miner type automated social media mining. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So this is yeah. So this is kind of how this document looks. It's a lot of stuff in here, and I bet you know we just haven't had. Um, I think the more people who put their eyes on it and start just looking through it, and and kind of like Charles shared, and like other people are sharing, this thing that just jump out at you is like the fuck is. 500,000 for that or whatever, like that's kind of, um, I think as we think about, as we move this discussion, thinking about, you know, what are the next steps in the fight? I think pulling those out and, and, and kind of thinking of how to narrate them, that's a really crucial part of it. So um, yeah, just wanted to share how these records look so people can start doing that. And so um, if you're interested in kind of doing that with us in our work groups, then you should email stop if he's buying a Gmail or, if you're even just looking by yourself and you see kind of interesting things, you can feel free to email us what you see as well. And yeah, so, I, and everyone has the Google Drive link for it. Great, thank you. Thank you, Shakir. Um, yeah, okay, so with that, I think we will, uh, <laughs> Carol says, fight technology with technology. Um, yeah, but definitely get in touch with us folks if you're interested in talking more about this or um, looking into the budget with us a bit more. And again, this doesn't, it can kind of um, be whatever format we decide in terms of how we're looking through it. Like it, it can be, because I know not everyone wants to sit and look at a document perhaps by themselves. It, it feels like it works best um, when we are able to kind of look at it together, kind of as we did just now and, and like be able to ask questions and and kind of be sharing with each other um, thoughts and feedback about about what we're looking at. Um, so we very much encourage folks to join us in that in that process. Um, but just keeping it moving, uh, we will now hand it over to I believe Hamid and Matios um, just to talk a bit more about uh, what is our fight. So when we are calling for the defunding of LAPD, the defunding of surveillance, um, kind of how are we organizing around that and talking a little bit more about that. So I will hand it over uh, to you, Hamid and Matios. 
Yeah, thanks so much, Tiff. Um, and yeah, as me kind of highlighted earlier uh, when discussing the budget zine, um, you know, today the police commission did kind of rubber stamp this budget and uh, we, we anticipated them to do so, but this really is the beginning of the budgeting process. And so it is gonna go to the mayor who's gonna come up with a packet and then forward that to the city council around May. So our big question, or I guess what we're really focused on is how do we uh, educate folks, uh, demystify the budgeting process um, and kind of engage folks in the budgeting process in order to um, defund the police, to uh, dismantle this police state. And so uh, we do have some time to do that. Um, and Hamid, if it's cool with you, I, I, we kind of talked about uh, the defund surveillance uh, group, which produced the zine. Uh, and it's a collaboration of uh, Free Rads and Stop LAPD Spying. Um, they also came up with a list of demands, um, uh, which I can show you a quick summary of um, around last year's budgeting process. Oh, thank you so much, Nate. Um, you've got it up. Um, and so, yeah, you know, it, we, we don't have to read the whole thing, but it lists uh, defund and disarm LAPD of all weapons of surveillance um, and LAPD siphoning of funds and data from other city departments. As me showed in that zine, uh, so much of the LAPD's funding comes from money from uh, other departments. Uh, it, it highlights how they get over a million from the Los Angeles Public Library uh, budget and all federal spending on LAPD. Um, so that's a means of uh, resources that goes to the LAPD. Abolish. <clears throat> oh, I'm, so I'm so sorry about that, Chella. I think someone came unmuted. Abolish the CSP surveillance program. Uh, and this is kind of uh, what, what Tiff was talking about. Um, uh, you know, the, the CSP program um, kind of kicked off, well, didn't kick off, but um, was a donation by the Balmer Group. Um, and so, um, you know, that's obviously another means by which the LAPD expands itself, uh, abolish the LAPD's propaganda unit. Um, so, and that's, uh, that's something we see a lot today, like uh, during today's police commission meeting, Chief Moore did spend a good deal of time uh, just kind of fear mongering and uh, sensationalizing real trauma that people experienced in order to justify uh, the expansion of this budget and abolish the LAPD's fraudulent oversight body, the police commission, whom we saw to be ineffectual today. Um, and Hamid, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I, <clears throat> thank you, Martius. I think the the key here is that uh, how are people in this conversation, um, even when you're looking at the budget, how are they approaching this thing? <clears throat> because a budget is basically a city's priorities. It's a reflection of a city's priorities. It's a reflection of what value is being placed on what. And, and when we look at this budget, and when we look at the history of the budgets in the city of Los Angeles, so you're looking overall last year, for example, the city's overall budget was about ten and a half billion dollars, out of which 3.2 or something went to the LAPD. So now you're looking at uh, even going through a, ma a major, major pandemic with looking at mass unemployment, people being displaced, record homelessness, you're looking at about 32% of the city's overall monies going to policing. So that's one thing of that. Second thing is when we start looking at how these monies come through and how they're allocated, uh, especially through the unrestricted money, which means that it could be spent any which way. So the city is not beholden to any of the grant restrictions or other things that they already have, but they choose to spend this money in policing. They choose to spend this money in policing their way out of the problems. So that's, uh, uh, that, that's, that, that's a second piece of that. And then I think we start looking at that, you know, okay, so at, when we arrive today at this moment, um, we also need to look at the additional monies that they are getting through federal grants and through the fee for service that they're providing to the Metro uh, division, libraries and other places as well. So the LAPD is gonna get a whole lot of money. So I think the challenge for us is that what is our basis for the fight? 
Um, and how do we how do we how do we start fighting? And I and 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 again, the LAPD and the the top line of this document on the screen says, and this is what we what we call them on that the LAPD commissioned their own study. I mean, they were just trying to play nice and going back to the the, the climate study, which is not an ecological thing because it's 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 an environment of LAPD's murders and violence. But almost always trying to kind of sense where people are, always looking to build trust. That's the language they use for the last 152 years of their existence. And even in their own surveys, 62% of Los Angeles residents said that money needs to be redirected and 37 supported proposals to completely dismantle police department. So I think I, I wanted to say that, that we have a fight ahead of us. And the fight is not just on the numbers level, it's really for, as somebody was saying earlier today, is for the soul of the city. It's really about like, you know, how are we thinking about Los Angeles? What kind of environment, what kind of culture, what kind of neighborhood? How do we deal with each other? How do, as people, we come together? This is this is a major, major, it's a moral issue. It's for the, it's for the soul of our communities. It's for the health and well-being of our communities. So, so that's just the kind of the, the, the landscape we are operating in. So then going back to what steps we need to take, one of the, so we have seven months ahead of us. This, as Nee was saying, the process, it goes to the mayor, it goes to the CEO, the, 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 the city, the, the CEO's office, and then it goes to the public, um, uh, the city council and goes to the budget and finance committee, the public safety committee. So we need to mobilize, but we need to, in order to mobilize, as we always say, we need to know our fight. So I think the question that I have is that the folks who are on this call today, if they can just put the, you know, just reach out to us, send us an email. Are you down to help us go through these, but this budget, are you down to kind of just go pencil line by line to really sift through a lot of these things? Because these are complicated, uh, complicated things. So it's not every, everybody's like, you know, forte. I, you know, just, it's, it's, it's challenging at times. And so that's one call that, that we need support in. The second one is how do people then engage in where we start having these smaller conversations in our community? Here we wanna bring in a, cl a clear example of the report that we just released. The report, the uh, uh, automating banishment, um, the surveillance and policing of looted land clearly states that how LAPD is using these tools of harm to, to target communities, to target neighborhoods, to target individuals, to create kill zones. So the technology money that is being spent is exactly being spent off what was exposed by this automating banishment. So thinking of those two together, I mean, I invite people to think of it deeply and look at that report as well that really exposes the LAPD's violence on so many different levels, how methodically when someone even tries to reclaim and keep wealth in their own local, uh, local neighborhood, how methodically they go after them. And the example of Nipsey Hussle as an entrepreneur in the local community is lifted too. So, you know, just to not look at this budget in isolation, but also provide these tangible, uh, you know, pieces along with the budget. So our conversation with our neighbors and our communities is really backed up, not just by rhetoric or like, you know, the money is increasing, but it's, it's increasing to expand the kill zones. It's, it's increasing to target more communities. It's increasing to criminalize uh, poverty. And the last thing I would say is that please keep in mind that you know five unhoused people are dying a day. That's about 1600 people who are dying, who are unhoused. And here the, uh, the, 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 the city council back in, just in September, about two months ago, came back with 4118. That's a municipal code that's been on the books since the late 1960s which completely criminalizes poverty, criminalizes unhoused people. So when you have thousands and thousands of people on one hand who are looking for a place to, for, for, to live, and on the other hand, you have massive expansion of the police, where do you think that enforcement is gonna go? So it's clearly gonna go after the unhoused people. It's clearly gonna go to displace and banish people and engage in extreme enforcement and displacement of individuals, of members of our community. So this fight back needs to be really driven by some deep thinking, 
by some critical analysis and by building this, this, this campaign and this fight by mobilizing people, informing people and educating each other. So we welcome you to join the fight. And I think that's that's all I can add to it, Matthias, because the next steps are that we're thinking of getting a letter together for groups to sign on, then people, and then we will invite people to start hammering the mayor's office, start calling the mayor's office. But in order to do that, in order to provide each other like some sort of a roadmap of what this fight is gonna look like over the next seven months, we need to put our heads together. So we, are, we invite people to come and join us. Let's build this fight together. Together. Let's build the, and, and, and bring in the, the thousands and millions of other people out uh, out there. And let's let's kind of just let's 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 dismantle this thing. Thank you. Back to you, Matthias. Great, thank you, uh, Hamid. And yeah, just uh, one more thing. So we yeah we have been um, these budget docs we got were a uh, result of a of a lawsuit um, that. Um, came as a result of this whole defund surveillance work and our inability to get the LAPD budget. We've been working in collaboration with uh, the police accountability team and BLMLA to kind of go over um, those docs and uh, develop some popular education materials. So look out for that. Uh, I'm just checking the comments real quick. Carol, yes, we look forward to your emails. And then Amir says, under the guise of public health and safety, every line item that I've seen so far checks this box as a justification. Yeah, and that's something uh, we've been seeing, particularly uh, in our war and youth uh, working group, the whole uh, public health and safety as a means of criminalizing and um, datifying folks. But yeah, that's, that's all I've got on my end. <laughs> I'll give it to you, Tiff. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Thanks so much, folks. Yeah, really excited uh, for these next steps and to be uh, hearing from folks and to be building with folks as well. Um, so yeah, definitely get in touch with us. And I also want to encourage folks to be um, joining us at our uh, fight against data driven policing and everything that um, that we were just talking about um, in terms of like how we fight back, how we fight, um, how we defund surveillance, how we push back on this police budget. Part of that is very much ingrained in the work that we are doing uh, in those working groups in terms of looking at um, LAPD's architecture of surveillance and looking at the specific way it harms folks and looking at and really unpacking the, the language around um, what is data-driven policing and how it says like, oh, this is the new version, this is the reformed version, this is the, the better version, and really like uncovering how that is continuing to do harm. So continuing to take so much money from the city's budget and, um, and just continuing to, to go after folks. Um, so uh, uncovering that harm and exposing it and giving us really specific information about how it's doing that um, and so all of that fits into this fight against um, LAPD's budget and against, uh, against LAPD. So I encourage folks to, to join us there. And I think we have, oh, I have a couple more comments here and we are gonna be wrapping it up. And, uh, and Susan says, Thanksgiving for all of you teaching us how to fight for justice and not to give up the fight. Thank you, Susan. Thank you so much. Um, all right, folks. So, oh, we have a, a wonderful slide here that I think Nee has created. And yeah, this is information. Sorry, I wasn't even looking at what was on the screen. So this is uh, information about our working group, um, the, the fight against data-driven policing. We do, as I said, we have kind of have a couple of main, we have one main working group that meets every two weeks. It meets on the first Monday of the month and the third Monday of the month. Um, and yeah, we welcome folks to join us. And then um, in addition to that, we have some, some main working groups that do meet. Uh, we can see the community policing one meets on December 3rd. And then we have additional ones that folks are plugging into the architecture of surveillance, academic complicity, defund surveillance, surveillance bureaucracy, and also grassroots research. So those are some of the things we have going on. Um, folks don't have to know anything about any of those to join them. So yeah, please just reach out and we'd love to, to be in touch with folks. Uh, and I will now just pause and see, uh, we are wrapping this meeting up um, and it's been great to be in conversation with folks, but I'll just pause and see if, if anyone has any community announcements or um, anything upcoming or any meetings that folks would like to, to share with all of us.
I, I just uh, uh, want to encourage people to uh, for to go to the report and see if they can. Um, uh, I'm, I don't know if someone can can type the website for the report. Um, and uh, because it's it was released two weeks ago, it's uh, it's 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 an incredible report, just a, a work of a lot of folks who came together. So please uh, look at that report as well, because it links directly with the budget and reach out to folks who are also trying to create reading circles for the report. And there's, uh, I believe there's a Google Doc that people can fill out um, if, uh, if someone has access to that Google Doc, if they can post that too. So join us in our reading circles and, um, you know, happy to, have, happy to hear from you. That's the only announcement I wanted to make. Awesome. Thank you for that, Hamid. Uh, and I think probably that Google form can also be found on the coalition website. Thank you, Marianne. All right, folks. Well, then uh, we will go ahead and say, and also Matios has just shared it in the chat as well. Thanks, Amira. Yeah, thank you so much, folks, for joining us. Um, really glad for the conversation and have a good evening and rest of your week. Thank you so much. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you.